Um, <clears throat> hello, um, it's Rita at Gold Medical. I see that glare in my glasses and it kind of ticks me off. But what can I do? Um, <clears throat> so I thought I'd better mention, <clears throat> sorry, came in without my water. I thought it'd be a good idea to mention HCAPS, hospital, let's see, let's go. Hospital Consumers Assessment Healthcare Providers. Okay, the H caps are the hospital. Hang on, get my notes out. The hospitals consumer, hospital consumer assessment healthcare providers and systems. Okay, so the H caps are a way of tracking and trending um, the, the level of um, satisfaction that patients are experiencing and uh, all hospitals are are looking for good numbers with their age caps. Okay, so um, when patients have had a hospital experience and uh, either inpatient or um, emergent, whatever you know, short stay, long stay, whatever, they uh, they receive um, an age cap. They receive a form to weigh in on, on how things went. And what are they weighing in on? HCAPs, hospital, consumer, assessment, healthcare, provider, providers and, providers and systems. How did the systems work at the hospital? How did the care they receive uh, work out for them at the hospital? Um, their, uh, what was their communication with their nurses like? What was their communication with their physicians like? What was the responsiveness of the staff, you know, when they are like ringing the bell, I need to go to the restroom or ringing the bell, I need a drink of water, or whatever. Um, were their medications uh, co co communicated well to them? Did they understand the medicines and treatments they were getting? Um, did they get discharge information? Um, and if they were transitioning from, uh, say the emergency room to the uh, uh, surgical unit or the emergency room to home or maybe from the hospital to a, a rehabilitation uh, hospital for, um, for recovery and so forth. So all of these things come into play. Um, things even such as cleanliness and um, um, cleanliness, what other things? Quiet. Quiet. Hospitals are, you know, should be a healing environment and should, you know, people should be reverent and, and considerate of uh, people not feeling well and needing to, you know, rest and recuperate and so forth. So a lot of those things are going to be on these H caps. And I'm so sorry. I didn't turn my phone off. Anyway, um, so I was thinking about that. And I know that uh, most healthcare workers, nurses, um, doctors, people in um, in hospitals in particular, I really, I really have to research. I'll get back to you on that. Whether H caps are being done, I imagine they are being done in uh, the outpatient settings and the surgery centers and the clinics and so forth. But absolutely, they're being done in the hospital, and a lot of that information is going to be public knowledge. Um, you may have to do a little deeper research than you want to do, but you can find out about that, excuse me, by um, by going to information on any given hospital and see what their ratings are. Um, people shop for shoes and hairdressers and uh, <laughs> nail parlors and uh, what else? Nail parlors. I had a friend that always called her her hairdresser, her hair operator. Um, but I mean, we shop around for everything. Where's the best place to get tires for your car, etc. cetera. So uh, why not? If you know you're going to be moving to an area 
or you know you have, um, I don't know, things, things that you need and providers that you need. I asked around, right? Oh, who does your hair? Or um, when you were pregnant and, you know, how did you find your best obstetrician? And, you know, so we do. We are looking for recommendations. So the age caps are um, hopefully true because patients are completing them or true reports on how a hospital is doing. Okay, so now, having talked about that, what helps, what uh, aids, what best um, helps a hospital other than, you know, terrific staff? What helps them get there? What helps them get, you know, when you look at the top tier hospitals, the hospitals with uh, the best age caps. What is making them? What is bringing them to the top of that scale? And um, interestingly enough, um, it's, you know, things you would think, you know, good doctors, good outcomes from surgery, um, you know, low mortality, um, positive experiences in all the departments in the ER and so forth. So, of course, those things. But what about the design of the hospital, okay? So I'm an older nurse, yeah. So um, the walls used to be kind of a horrible green. Um, hospitals were, were very utilitarian. Um, they were built more for efficiency. They weren't built for, um, um, they weren't built for the benefit of, uh, the design was not built to meet patient, family, and staff needs, right? Um, and, and not that it's, it wasn't built for their needs. Of course, there's oxygen where you need oxygen. Oh, there it comes my hand. I have to use my hands when I talk. Uh, but of course, there was oxygen, you know, the, the needs, the medical needs, the treatment needs would certainly be, be there. But um, I don't know, this room, I don't know if you can see it, but it's an, it's been an office for a long time. But two of my favorite colors are purple and green. Actually wearing a, a purple, this purple in the drapes, and green on the walls. And it's just a personal, it's been a favorite of mine for years and years. I'm trying to transi transition into the coffee and latte colors in other parts of my home. But uh, purples and greens always appeal to me. And uh, that, met my, that met, met my needs for comfort and satisfaction in my home because those are colors I liked. That's the paint I got, and that's the curtain I got, and that's the blouse I got for my own comfort. Facilities, uh, big hospitals, and uh, their design and their benefits uh, to meet the, the patient, the patient's family, and the staff needs for comfort and um, um, in the building, in the design, in the presentation and in the arena that the patient, the patient's family and the staff all participate in, right? So that would include the lobby, that would include all the units, the pediatric unit, the cardiac unit, um, it would include nurses stations, patient rooms, um, nurses break areas. So this one facility in San Diego, um, they did something really terrific. And um, they, in addition to having the patient rooms be really efficient um, and really um, self-sufficient, you know, Everything that was needed was pretty much in that room. The room was not a tight space. Um, they had huge, huge big screen TVs. You know, that may or may not appeal to people, but uh, in their studies, they must have realized that, um, you know, that that was a positive for patients and their families. Um, but one of the things that I thought was beautiful is that the nurses' um, break area included a patio, 
an outdoor patio. It wasn't huge. It had a table and chairs and uh, the nurses could very easily go from taking care of their patients, going down the hall, washing their hands and having a break room with a refrigerator and, um, uh, you know, cabinets and coffee and uh, clean water and a patio. They could go out and get a breath of fresh air. And how wonderful is that? Even if you just took five or 10 minutes to put your feet up, to close your eyes, to feel the sun or to feel the cool breeze or even rain, uh, you know, how wonderful in the middle of a busy work day to unwind and have that five minutes or 30 minutes or whatever you're able to take. So, <clears throat> so age caps are important. Hospitals know that they're important. Administrators know that they're important. And patient outcome, patient um, healing and care and um, low morbidity, low mortality, uh, or yeah, low, yeah. We don't want people to die. We want people to get well, get out of that hospital and have great outcomes. And so um, in the 21st century, which we're in, um, another piece of the puzzle was put into place. So instead of having these very sterile, um, you know, certainly clean and certainly, um, you know, with, with uh, thoughts towards good outcomes from surgeries and from treatments and from all the things that occur in a hospital, um, but to add to the healing, to add to um, positive work environments. So, um, they, they, uh, they started to look at hospital design and how it was meeting the needs of um, the staff, including the staff, not just the patients and the patient's family, which is critical, but the staff as well. So uh, what did they find when they started to base design on these components? Uh, they found that um, when those needs were met, when the patient, the family, and the staff needs were met, the environmental needs were met, um, everybody was more effective. How great is that? Morale was up. How great is that? Um, administrators were reaching their safety goals more readily and cost was reduced. Okay. Bottom line, any business, you got to make some money and you got to reduce cost and waste. And so by doing the right thing up front, it cascaded down the line. And so um, age caps improved, um, patients' uh, responses to, to what was going on in the hospital, those, those numbers went up. Staff retention improves. I mean, all kinds of things improve. So, um, yeah. So those little things. So like, oh, I like purple. So I'm going to get some purple in my clothes and my curtains or whatever. And um, but thinking of that on a bigger scale, you know, doing your studies. Um, how nice is that? So I was thinking, yeah, H caps are important. We're well aware of it, but um, design counts too. Design counts too. And I do remember, because I'm one of those older nurses, and my clinical training occurred at um, a variety of hospitals. Some which were private, some were um, public, some were city, and so forth. But um, most of them didn't, you know, they might have been bigger or newer, but most of them just, that was not the deal back in the 70s when I started, the 1970s, um, things were very utilitarian. Things were, um, I mean, really, I remember this green. I wish I could explain this green to you. It's not pea green. It's just sort of somewhere between pea and sea foam. That was a typical color in hospitals. Um, um, it smelled a, pre a very prevalent smell was um, was alcohol and, um, and some poor smells, <laughs> not some some great smells. I mean, we had um, 
it was just different. It was different. Um, and now uh, this hospital, I was telling you, I was able to take a tour when they had just finished it. They had the most beautiful lobby, um, the same hospital that put in these patios on every nursing unit. Um, the nurses had a break room and a patio. I just thought that was marvelous. And um, oh, the pediatric, I can't even remember all the details of the pediatric unit, but so when the pediatric patient went down the hall, there were, you know, kind of interactive things on the wall. I mean, they really just put so much thought and, and um, did their homework and created um, style and design and function around their patients, their patient's family, and their staff. And I think the age caps, um, yeah, they, they, the end result is that the age caps improve, which is, it's like your report card. It's like a hospital report card. So age caps, it just doesn't roll off the tongue, but it's um, hospital consumer assessment of healthcare <sighs> policy, healthcare providers and systems, right? The all important age caps. So um, yeah, I thought that was worth talking about. And um, I hope everybody's doing well. Next week will be Thanksgiving, the start of the winter holidays, my all time favorite holidays, Thanksgiving. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing lots of friends and family and having time with them. That's the beauty of Thanksgiving. We take time out and spend time together. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, gotta get busy, <laughs> get my house clean and organized for my crowd. But um, yeah, great time of the year. And um, so enough said, I just kind of, you know, get a little off track, but Gold Medical, is here for the healthcare community so that here come my hands <laughs> so that healthcare workers and healthcare employers can meet find each other there you can find us uh, on facebook and twitter and instagram and youtube um, some of these videos are on youtube and i do promise you know what i will get busy and do a blog i haven't done a blog in a while it's a little under the weather myself and um so I haven't been inspired to write, but there's so much to write about in the healthcare realm. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about all of it. We do talk about all of it. You know, interviewing for jobs, seeking employees, um, staff retention, um, you know, just uh, little tidbits. I think a couple of, couple of videos ago, I, I did some uh, questions and answers and, and uh, and then I gave you the answers, but but I think that's fun to do too, is just to tease our, tease our brain with the basics. I don't have one ready for you today. Okay, I promise next blog, I mean next video that I'll, uh, I'll throw in some uh, Nursing 101 or 102 or 201, whatever, whatever comes to mind. And, uh, and feel free to email me or uh, Rita at Gold Medical Jobs or Paul at goldmedicaljobs.com. We're here for you, and Gold Medical is here for you, and we hope you have fun, and uh, nurses, and uh, therapists, and techs, and everybody, surgical techs, CNAs, RNs, you name it, uh, NPs, PAs, MDs, <laughs> um, you can sign up for free with as little or as much information as you want, and employers will uh, see your profiles, and um, you can see the employers. And uh, we are, I am talking to you from Southern California, but our clients are throughout the nation. And uh, you can kind of see what's going on out there with the things that you're interested in and things that you're experienced in or thinking about moving. There's so many um, options for the healthcare worker now. We're not just uh, pigeonholed into doing um, one thing anymore. You know, there's lots of um, options for the healthcare worker nowadays. So um, 
enough said. HCAPS just occurred to me, and then um, I took it that next step. Like, what's a great way to get there? And one of those ways happens to be um, the benefit of good hospital design in uh, meeting the needs of patients, their families, and staff members. So, you know, it just, it's across the board, you know, for um, staff member is um, in, a, in a, you know, has higher morale, they're working more effectively, their patients, uh, just like your pets and your small children, they, they absorb whether they, you know, have the intellect that you're, you know, that an adult has, they absorb, you know, you walk around with a frowny face, it's contagious, right? You walk around with a cheerful face and that's contagious too. Some of the highlights of my day, my day are random smiles I, I happen to catch from a child, from a senior. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's so motivating and uplifting. It just is. It just is. All right, everybody. Love you a lot. It's uh, Wednesday. It's November uh, the 20th. And uh, I'll check in with you. I'll check in with you again a couple of times this week. I'm thinking tomorrow, my friend Mary has been very busy with her wellness business, uh, Vazenda, V A Z A N D O D A H, Vazenda, V A Z. It's it's spelled exactly the way it sounds, Vazenda, V-A-Z-A-N-D-A-H, I believe. Uh, check out Vazenda, her wellness business. It's doing well back east. And um, she's been to some conferences, and um, she always has something wonderful to share about healthcare and wellness and well-being. And um, so maybe she can join us tomorrow. And then I'll check back in with you on Friday. And then uh, next week, we'll, we'll do what we can. I'll probably check in early in the week. And a lot of out-of-towners and, and my mom and people will be coming on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's going to get busy around here. But um, I'll definitely check in at the beginning of the week. And I'll try to get a blog out to you. And uh, check us out. We're here for you. And we'd love to hear from you. Thanks.